Hello crafters and welcome to Peter P Crafts Lockdown Lives brought to you by From Picture to Page and Beyond Paper Craft Shows. I'm your host Michelle Brown, Creative Director at From Picture to Page which is our scrapbooking, mixed media art and paper crafting community and we're so excited to be here for our Peter P Crafts Lockdown Live Evening Edition. Now the Lockdown Lives are a series of videos to bring you the best of our retailers in scrapbooking, mixed media, card making and art journaling and we're really excited to be able to bring you these videos but of course for all the details head over to our website from picture to page and beyond .com .au, where you can see past seasons, you can see who's coming up and of course while you're there make sure you're on our email list so we can deliver all the updates straight into your inbox. Now whether you're watching live on Facebook or you're watching a replay on Facebook or YouTube we would love to know that you're there. So pop in the comments, give us a thumbs up, any questions pop them in the comments as well and we'll do our very best to answer them. Now today P2P Craft Lockdown Live is with Alison from Kazaz. Hi Alison. Hi Michelle, hi everyone at home. <laughs> it's so good to see you. How's things at Kazaz these days? Things are very exciting. Lots of new products, lots of new goodies to play with and uh, some different bits and pieces in the works as well. So all very exciting here at Kazaz. Um, yes, yeah, so we have heard there's been a bit of a release recently. Tell us about that. There has. So we have our brand new, I'm really going to hope I say it correctly, but Papillion release. Yeah, I don't think I did. <laughs> um, and we've also got all of these lovely uh, stamp value packs as well, Ooh. some colouring in kits. There's lots of different bits and pieces for everyone. So I'm really excited to be able to share it with everybody tonight. Excellent. And the colouring ink kits, are they something new for Kazaz? We had them a number of years ago, but they've come back again and they're called DIY for kids. And I have decided I am a big kid <laughs> because I love making them. So you get four cards for less than $4 yep. and away you go. It, takes no time at all to colour them in. Yeah, so, oh, very excellent. And it sounds like one of those nice little projects that, you know, we can really throw ourselves into but may not be too taxing at the moment. Correct, correct. And then you've got four cards for your stash that you can give away very quickly and easily. <laughs> yes, we no, talked about that on our update well. recently for those who do batch cards or who do individual cards. And it was about 50-50. Some people like to get a bit of a rhythm up. Others would just make sort of one-off special ones. So it was interesting to see. Yeah, I, I tend to do a bit of both. I still have one more lot of batch cards I need to do, yeah, probably about three weeks ago, maybe three months ago, so oh, I no. might get to them this week. <laughs> we'll get there. Oh, yes, that is a challenge, isn't it? So, Alison, what are you going to share with us today? So, today I'm going to share with you a scrapbooking layout. This could be done either as a single page layout or like what I'm doing, I'm doing the flip side of a double page. And then I'll talk you through my thoughts and plans for what I might do over the next few days to kind of go between the two layouts. So Ooh, very exciting. Excellent. Okay, well, we'll let you get yourself started and we'll jump right in. Excellent. So while Alison's getting her camera ready, it's fantastic to see so many of you there. Hello, Anne. Hello, Alana. Hi, Sue. Hi, Mutley Gray. Hi, Danny. Hi, Pam. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Chris. Hi, Carol. Hi, Shireen. Hi, Denise. Hi, Wendy. It's so lovely to see you all there. Thank you so much for joining us because we know it is a very challenging time here in Victoria and hopefully you are somewhere warm and you've got just a little bit of time to catch up with what we're up to and then hopefully catch up with some replays as well. So I think Alison is ready to go. So take it away, Alison. Fantastic. So oh, that is amazing. I love it. So we have our lovely French range and I'm actually scrapbooking some photos from Paris from a few years ago. But I have used on this layout, and we're going to do the other side of it, but I've used some of the cutouts and just altered them a little bit with some inking, um, stamped and die cut out the butterfly, stamped some little messages, and also done a little bit of background stamping as well. So I had great time doing this. You can't tell, but in the background I also tried stamping um with the new metallic pans but it didn't quite like the look of it so i just covered it up oh okay so <laughs> that's always an option <laughs> well and it was only because of the stamp i was using so i loved that love them though they are beautiful so we're actually going to do the blue version oh. so i've already 
cut down my paper mm -hmm. and it'll be cut on an angle because I'm me. Um, and I've already cut out my photo map for the 5x7 photo. And you can kind of see it's two photos, same thing, really, the Arc de Triomphe. But what I've decided to do, and this is what I was talking about earlier, is I'm actually going to create some pockets to go in between the two layouts. Oh. When you sit them side by side, they do match, but I'm going to put some pocket pages in there just to separate them out and use the rest of those photos. Mm. So the general plan. So that paper so, comes in a 12 by 12, but you've just trimmed it down for the matting. Yeah, so I've already trimmed it down just to speed things up. So these are the three papers. So they are absolutely fantastic for scrapbooking because of the fact that the sides, um, both sides match. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to, I could actually do that double page layout and I don't need to worry about what's in the corner. Mm. I went for the blue though. So this is the other side to the blue with that beautiful bird cage and then we've got the steampunk glasses on the side that I'm using tonight. So let's get started with some background stamping. So I'm just using the grunge background. I've gone with the stormy sky oxide for this one. I used aged mahogany on the other layout that I've already done. Now I'm going to turn it up the right way, not that it matters, it's just in the background. And I am also just rolling it on, I'm going to get a little bit more, not inking up the stamp particularly well, but... But yeah, that's a nice way to just give you that little bit of visual texture without being too solid behind it. That's it. And I know that my photo is going to go somewhere in the middle. So then that's why sometimes I just clean off my stamp in the middle. <laughs> Seems to work for me. Uh, put that over to there. Now I'm using the um, butterfly background stamp as well. That's a great size stamp. That gives you a card front straight away. I love them. Well, that's it. And you could. You could use these to do a um, card front, whatever. I was thinking, except I decided against doing fussy cutting, fussy cutting, stamping and embossing this, and I was like, no, no let's let's not do any fussy cutting tonight. Yeah, I think you've got to be in the right mindset for fussy cutting. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't quite there today. <laughs> Fair enough. So we've got those backgrounds there, and then I'm going to. Hope that I also bought over that. I don't think that I did. What I'm looking for is my cleansing tool. I've got one for every colour but the colour I want. So we're going to go with a little bit of brown on the edge of this. That's fine. I was going to edge around with Stormy Sky, but we'll just do a very light edge with the um, vintage photo. Yeah, well, with the print on it, that still all ties it together. That's exactly right. And part of the reason why I'm doing the quick blend around the edge is because one of the things that I noticed when I was first playing around with the different papers and different bits and pieces is it didn't quite mat it, it didn't quite bring your eye in where I wanted it to come in. Okay. And so I thought I need to ground it somehow. I knew that it would be too harsh if I got out of um gel pen and so I thought what's the best way to do it and the best way to do it would actually be to just do that very nice blend around the edge just to kind of ground that a little bit yeah so that, this is beautiful paper mm, do you know how thick it is not off the top of my head right. but like I said it certainly sounds like it's got a good thickness to it it is nice and thick mm. um, and I can see my flyer but it's on the other side of my table um, and by other side of my table I have three trestle tables set up in my craft room and so it's on the, on the far side um, and it is safe to say that all three sides are covered in um, 
crafty goodness yeah. right now. That's what happens. The more flat space you have, the more you fill it up. And I generally only clean it properly when I've got workshops happening. Yeah. So. Well, that's what happened to us yeah. after getting back from a Packenham show and my husband set up two extra tables. It's like, don't do that. Now I have to put stuff on it. Yeah. 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 And you just kind of go, how did I end up with such a mess? So now I'm going to improvise with the fact that I don't have that uh, blending tool and I'm just going to do the old technique of director. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I think I've said this before. I print my photos with a white background. I like the look of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, therefore, that's just how I roll so that then I always get that lovely white background. I can cut it off if I want. Yep. But for me, I like it that way. Yeah, the border so. adds a nice touch to it, now, especially now that you've layered it. It gives it that extra depth. Yep. So I'm going to try and work a little bit upside down for you as well. We'll see how we go. Either way, we can cope. Fine. I'll see. As I said, I'll see how I go. So I'm going to flick through the cutouts that go with this range. Mm -hmm. So the cutouts are 250 GSM, uh -huh. and there is 40 of them. So 20 designs, two of each. 40. That's and amazing. They, it is beautiful. So I've only taken out a few out of this packet. Um, and there we go. But they match everything. They match the paper, the collage paper pad, the whole lot. So they are absolutely beautiful. The only one I know that I wish to use, <laughs> I definitely want to use, is that perfect day one. And the rest, I'm actually just going to have a little bit of a play with and just have a flick through and work out which ones I want to use. I'm going to add another butterfly. It is lovely how they all tie together and it's such sort of that a muted palette. They are and it's it's really interesting because the blue is quite um, strong and quite blue and yet these are more of your browns and different bits and pieces. Mm. If you want a quick card, thank you for your kindness. You could put that on the front of a card. That's the butterfly I knew I was going to be looking for. Mm. Mm. I might take out the yellowy one. Mm -hmm. And when you were in Paris, did you get to the top of the Art de Trump? Yes, yes. I've got to remember. I've, sounds awful. I've been there a few times. So, <laughs> but on this particular trip, yes, I think we did go up. My favourite Arc de Triomphe story is the fact that when I was there in 2015 with my sister, uh, I wanted to leave. I was cold, wet and miserable and my shoes apparently were not as waterproof as what I thought. Oh, no. She made me stay and um, it turned out we were waiting for the um, evening service and as we sat there waiting and waiting and waiting, um, all of a sudden they started to come across and it was the Kiwi contingent for Anzac Day because we were there not long after Anzac Day. And so I have seen the haka performed under the Arc Oh, Freon. wow. So <laughs> that, that is was special. special. Yeah. That was pretty spectacular. And my sister has constantly reminded me that uh, aren't you glad that we didn't leave? <laughs> yeah. It's so hard, isn't it, when you're tired and cold and... Mm. Yep. Yep. We were catching up from no sleep over Anzac Day. So we'd been in Gallipoli. Anybody would think I'm a uh, history teacher? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always good to have that up your sleeve as context for your students. Exactly. They've all just sat and looked at my photos from the Western Front. So, Okay, so I'm going to pop that in the centre there. I did think about using some um, cardboard. I usually just get out some packaging and different bits and pieces and lifting it up a little bit further but I decided it actually didn't need it. Okay. The mat has done enough to lift the photo from the page mm. so that's been quite nice. I'm not just randomly throwing my rubbish there is a bin next to me about half of it is making its way into the bin. I'm just going to pull out my second one here just to make sure I don't mind if they're not level but about level would work. Mm. 
I always figure once it's in an album, it's really hard to tell. Yeah. Now, what I'm doing, I'm not re-inking this up at all, but this has a tiny little bit of um, the vintage photo left on it from earlier, mm -hmm. and I'm just altering these enough. Mm. Because when I put them on here, they were too white, mm. and it didn't quite have that muted tone that we were talking about before. Yeah, and, and sometimes so, if you don't really don't want the white, you can fussy cut it off or bring it down a little bit. That's it. And I thought by doing it this way, we're just kind of, or I'm just aging it just that little bit and just getting it uh, just to look a little bit different, altering it. And also, more importantly, I just didn't feel like fussy cutting. <laughs> yep, there is that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a machine that does it, but uh, didn't feel like fussy cutting. Okay. And then I liked the perfect day. And the blue of the perfect day fits in with the other as well. So this is how quickly and easily this is coming together. Mm. There are a couple of steps, including one that I need to do before I start sticking down these. And you just usually add your cutouts with double-sided tape? Yes. So I'll just use the double-sided tape. I will magic mount the perfect day, oh, okay. but that one I won't do. So I'm going to do a tiny little bit of stamping and die cutting. So I've got this butterfly stamp. It's the floral butterfly stamp. Uh -huh. And pop that in there. Is that part of the new release as well? This is, this is all part of the new release. So this stamp is beautiful. I also haven't cut it out yet. Um, so I could cut around it for the rest of it, but I haven't done that. Because I'm using my precision press, I can stamp that again. It changes stamping, doesn't it? It does. And particularly with oxide inks, because they're not really that good necessarily for stamping, mm. they stamp really nicely, but often you do get that um, edge. Yeah. Just wondering if and I'm sometimes with new stamps, they just need a little bit of working in as well, and just sometimes they have a bit of a coating on them. That's it. It looks like I moved it, so I'm just going to flick it over to the other side. <laughs> There's always two sides. Correct. And nobody knows except for everybody that's watching this that I've had to do. <laughs> I know we can all sympathise. We've all been there before. I'm actually going to add a different colour to the stamp as well. Ooh. I'm going to be brave, given that I've already had to flip over my piece of paper once. I'm just going to wipe off the stormy sky. And then with the vintage photo that is also sitting here, I don't want too much. Mm. But I'm just going to just add that little bit to it as well. Oh, wow. A... Yeah, that really changes the look of it. Yeah. And you could, because, of course, the oxide inks layer, you could do it the other way around. You could start with the vintage photo and then add the stormy sky, or you could do it that way. Mm. And now that just so matches going... your die cuts perfectly. It does. And then I'm actually going to use the matching die. Oh, so, I think whoever decided that dies to match stamps was the most wonderful invention in the whole world. <laughs> uh, yes, they are my new favourite person. So this beautiful layered butterfly, mm -hmm. we've got the layered butterfly, the layered bird cage, and the layered dove. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to cut the solid. I'm not cutting the um, yeah. top bit for the butterfly. Now, I could... Use what I um, cut out earlier and line this up properly, mm -hmm. or I could actually do this, hope for the best, and blend around the edge if I don't get it correct. <laughs> Sometimes hoping for the best is a good way to get stuff done. Yep, that's what I do. So I'm just using the Gemini Mini. Mm -hmm. uh, 
this is the ultimate in laziness <laughs> uh, because it can sit on my desk next to me and the majority of our dyes will go through it. Oh, no. Nice. It also just takes up that mini. less space, yeah. It is brilliant because it means... Oh, look, I didn't do too bad. Oh. Um, it just means that I don't need to get up. Yeah. And, yes, sometimes... So, Alison, before I you do... edge it, could you just hold it up to the camera so we can just see how, yeah, like you said, it's slightly... That's it. Yeah, slightly a bit of a gap, but, you know, you can easily cover that up. And it's not too – that's actually better than the one that I uh, <laughs> did on the other page. Mm. But it's always good to have these tips and tricks for hiding those little things. Absolutely. And I, I sometimes watch crafters and I think to myself, does it matter if it's not perfect? I'll do the last little bit of stamping. Does it matter if, you know, you – can see that little gap or you can't see that little gap because at the end of the day I've got too many photos to scrapbook and would people see it if they were riding past on a horse I think is the same and it's like I, don't think that they... I remember someone once saying it's handmade it's not factory made so it's all the Correct. little bits that yeah. added to it so this stamp is also part of the new range and it has all of these fantastic sayings on it. Oh, we like a good sentiment stamp. That And I've, I'm stamping basically the whole thing. I'm only going to use one or two. Mm. But I'm just going to put them into a little container and then I will use those on another card or layout or with these pocket pages that I'm going to do. Or they go to the kids down the um, front of my place here um but either way well, that is another good time saving tip you might as well stamp it all at once cut them out then you'll have them ready to go and i worry about cutting this up not because um i'm worried about cutting into the stamp or anything along those lines mm. but i'm more worried about losing one yeah. of the stamps because i'm not very good at putting them away all the time <laughs> Yeah, and I think sometimes with that cling mount, when you cut it small, it seems to lose its cling faster. Yes, yeah. And for some reason, the UI Unique didn't quite stamp very well. I'll just stamp just that bit. It's okay, I actually only want the Unique. So, that stamp. Now, keeping in mind that because of the size of my precision press, I'm missing the top two rows, but you've got things like believe in yourself, lucky is a state of mind, not all who wander are lost. Oh, nice. Um, be who you really are, good vibes. Every experience is priceless, is a priceless collector's item, all the rest of it. So I know I'm just going to use um, not all who wander are lost. Uh -huh. I might use the unique. Oh, nice. And a few different but, fonts I, too by the looks of it. Yeah. It is absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to use the guillotine here quickly. Just cut that down. And then they go over into the pile to be used later. They might use the Live Simply that's also on this line. I don't know if Live Simply really matches with Paris, but look, we'll, we'll go with it. I think sometimes when you're on holidays, you do live sim simpler. Mm. It's, I usually don't travel with a phone. It's amazing. <laughs> Nobody can contact me. <laughs> right, how many um, phone calls and things you get during the day. Yeah. And what are your thoughts about adding words and sentiments to your scrapbooking layouts? I love it. I'm also a big fan of um, journaling uh -huh. and journaling using your own handwriting, and I hate my handwriting. Um, but I think words on a layout just make, they often make it. It says a little bit about that person who's making the layout, what they thought at that point in time, and so on and so forth. So 
I'm a big fan. I do add a lot. Yeah. And I do that very much in my art journaling as well. There's just something about having a word. It just attracts our attention and it just, yeah, it gives, tells a bit more of the story. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what I've started doing recently is putting my um, magic mount in the centre of, oh, sorry, on the um, outer bits of my butterfly to help those wings oh, okay. stay up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So tape in the middle, magic mount on the centre. I'm not too concerned about covering up um, some of the photo and different bits and pieces. Um, do the bottom here. And what is that shape you've got, Alison? Which one Yeah, here? that one. Is it an owl? It is. It's, it looks a little bit like an owl. It's the locket oh, within the wings. Right. So I was tossing up between an owl and a golden snitch, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, it, it, as somebody who's never read Harry Potter, yep, could be. <laughs> I know about it. <laughs> um, I'm going to pop that underneath here. Well, the locket makes much more sense. I didn't quite see how the owl was fitting in with the butterfly theme. Yeah. And look, I'm just adding the different um, cutouts that I like, that I think match, and different bits and pieces. I'm going to put that one in I don't know about anybody else, but when I craft, I have things everywhere. So it is a mess. It is. <laughs> it's a creative mess. It is. A creative oh, it's so frustrating looking for those things you had in your hands just moments ago. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually going to pop that up the top. Ooh. I am looking at the other one because I'm working out which one will go on which side of the album because I'll put pockets in between it, it won't matter. And that's often how I'll set up, particularly my travel albums, is if I end up with um, a lot of photos of the one thing and the one place, I will often uh, just use pockets and things in between layouts. So tell us a bit more about the pockets for those that haven't heard about them. So we've got two different types of pockets. We've got the landscape and the portrait. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I will often just cut them up and stick the two of them back together again with some washi tape or just cut them up if I've only got a few photos that I need to put in. Mm -hmm. But it means that you can do something a little bit different with your scrapbooking <coughs> excuse me um and it means that you can just <coughs> i've got my heater going so i'm now getting that dry throat um <coughs> you just do something that little bit different speeds up the scrapbooking process I've got lots of photos of whether it be Paris or my Western Front tours, for example, and things like that, that just mean that I can add them in a different way. Yeah. And so you do much scrapbooking with the pockets or you just pop the photos in? <laughs> I do a fair bit. I do more than what I've realised. Um, and one of the things that I am going to look at doing um, this weekend, now that my order has arrived, is I've got the card making kit for um, our new range, the Papillion range. And I've done this with a couple of others, where instead of making them up as cards, I will end up making them up as pockets and then use these as pockets that uh, I can use in scrapbooking so I just change out some of the sentiments but for the most part they work with anything 
Yeah. So in the card making kit you do, you get all of the different bits and pieces that you need to create it all. Oh, wonderful. So yeah, for the card makers of Munsters, just tell us a bit more about the kit. So in the kit they're twenty nine ninety five, and everything is in there that you need, um, including whether it be um, the ribbon, although this is different ribbon to what it says, so therefore there is the little bonus chip cord that you can use, mm -hmm. some pearls, um, enough uh, card essentials to make not only all of the cards in the pack, but I always end up with leftover paper, the printed pages and inspiration so that you have some idea of what it is that you might want to create. Oh well, and that's the same die cut pack? It is, it is, so I'll have yet another pack of the cutouts that I can use and so on and so forth. So the card making kit's a great value. Mm. And before when we were talking about, you know, do you bulk, um, make your cards or how do you do it, often I'll make up a couple of the kits and it's surprising how quickly you go through them once people know that you're a card maker and ask you for the cards. Mm. Um, <laughs> so a few other bits and pieces here. There's the collage paper pad that goes with the new range so you can cut out the butterflies. You can use some of this for paper layering. Um, more cutouts if you wanted to do some fussy cutting and different bits and pieces. Oh, so some little journaling blocks, nice. Little journaling blocks. Um, the stamp that I was using before. Uh -huh. Some other words that you could cut out and use. So there's lots of beautiful new bits and pieces. And I think the one thing that I am most excited to be using is... I've only, only received it oh. late last But beautiful metallic uh, watercolour pans. Oh, so they beautiful. Are metallic. I don't know if you can see the shimmer on camera, mm, but they have a, a little, beautiful yeah. shimmer to them and they are very pigmented. So uh, they will be getting used this weekend. Uh, and we've also got... A new stencil as well. Ooh. So obviously cleaned very nicely. <laughs> well, that helps us to see it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, and the last little bit that I can hopefully reach because it seems to have disappeared is what we were talking about before in terms of one of these beautiful DIY for kids packs. Oh, yeah. So, this is cuteness. And you get oh they are adorable so this will be my project tomorrow uh -huh. and uh, I will be making those up they are absolutely beautiful All right so what comes in that kit so in this kit it's 495 no sorry 395 uh -huh. I'll get that right so 395 you get the two printed um, sheets there. Mm -hmm. Four bits of cardstock. Oh, excellent. Pick whatever medium we want you want to use to colour it in and you've got four cards in no time whatsoever. Yeah. So So you um you think would could you use your um Coptic markers on that paper? Or do you think yes, more watercolours or Yeah, I no, I have used everything from watercolours to I have used um tri blend markers. I liked using the tri blends. I used them on the koalas um, because it meant that I didn't need to think as I was shading them. Mm. Yeah. Whereas you know, some of the other alcohol ink markers, and I've got to think as to what colour goes with which. And mm. sometimes I just want to craft and not be able to think. So yeah. okay, here's the layout that's just very quickly put together, and here is its companion. So they're just very quick and easy layouts and I will find the date that I was there and add them and they can go into an album oh fantastic well thanks Alison I will let you get your camera back up and we'll have a chat 
wasn't that just amazing to see all those different elements of the new range for Kazaz and it really is a way of bringing together the papers and the die cuts and then the inks and the stamps and it's kind of just nice to to make crafting simple again as well instead of trying to bring things together that may not fit so Alison thank you so much for bringing all that to us today not a problem Excellent. um the last thing that I will tell everybody is because as did release a new special today mm -hmm. so it is spent a hundred dollars on papers stamps papers and stamps and get a surprise a hundred dollar value pack oh wow so I'm really hoping I got that right yeah I hope so too and have you had a, a, a value pack before what sort of things will you expect to see in it we have so you will see things in there such as um, whether it be some dyes, whether it be some other papers. Um, they have also said that one of the things that you might get, yes, receive a $100 surprise pack for every $100 spent on papers and stamps. Um, you might get a $100 gift that is just um, a $100 um, product. So who knows? But uh, that is very exciting it is so, it is and so if people want to order those through you how's the best way to get in touch so I will put a link to my web store um, on this video and up on my Facebook page um, or you can get in touch with me via um, Kazaz with Allison as well on mm -hmm. Facebook yep, so Facebook. have a look work out what you want you might want some of the those lovely background stamps that I showed you tonight yeah Excellent. So, Alison, what do you think is your favourite part of this new collection? It, I love the papers. <laughs> I absolutely love the papers. They are very me. Uh, when you flick through my albums, I use a lot of blue paper. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm not quite sure why. I just always have. <laughs> I love the paper. Uh, excellent. <laughs> well, Alison, thank you so much for sharing your scrapbooking and your um, photos that go with it as well. It's just so lovely to see. And I think we had at least one, was it Lavinia, saying she just really enjoyed watching scrapbooking again. So she hasn't done much since she started card making. There you go. And I go between the two, Lavinia. I go between card making and scrapbooking and sometimes I do a bit of both. Yeah. And that's what we love about paper crafts is that you can transfer those skills to so many different elements. You're not sort of just stuck with one. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, I sometimes wonder how people get through a lockdown without craft. I know. I, know I'd go even... I, I don't think that would be possible. <laughs> it would not. And that's what we said to everyone. If you feel like crafting, that's great. If you're not quite there, then that's fine. Just, just watch along and then hopefully something will click and when you're ready to go, we'll be there. That's it. That's it. Excellent. Well, Alison, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. We shall. So I hope you enjoyed that fantastic demonstration. Like I said, Alison is just an absolute whiz with those scrapbooking layouts. And it just reminds us that it doesn't have to be complicated with some patterns, um, pattern paper and your stamps and your cutouts that all match. It just makes it so simple. And it is a way to get those photos off your cameras out of the cupboard and just have them there to share. So if you have any questions, pop them here. And as Alison said, she'll pop her links to her store as well and her Facebook page. And then you can get in touch. And I think I'm going to have to check out those new metallic watercolors. They've got my interest. So this is Michelle signing off. I hope you have a crafty day.